Mao's is a comic about a father and son trying to understand each other. I think it's more directly that than it is about the Holocaust, you know. You know, Mao's has had a far larger impact in the world than I ever expected. 25 years ago, I'd only hoped it might be discovered sometime after I died. It's swell to get recognition, but it's kind of hard to be seen behind a mouse mask. The book seems to loom over me like my father once did, and journalists and students still want answers to the same few questions. Why comics? Why mice? Why the Holocaust? Yikes. Or, to quote my forefathers, oi. But I thought I'd finally try to answer as fully as I could. That way, when asked in the future, maybe I could just say, never again. And maybe I could even get my damned mask off. I can't breathe in this thing. Ugh, urk, oof, uh, rip. Oh. Everybody was running, running, running in a few minutes because the Germans, they had a big order. And they did something, they did it very good. This I have to add that they did right. And so they did also, of course, was the finishing so many millions of Jews so systematically that it went a very long time that people didn't know even that they are going to be buried in the guest chamber till the last minute. A lot of people didn't know this. At the time I was trying to figure this out, I went to sit in on some classes. A friend of mine, Ken Jacobs, a filmmaker and very wonderful teacher at SUNY Binghamton, was showing some old animated cartoons in his class with cats and mice romping around. And then he was showing some racist cartoons from the same period, and it became clear that there was a connection between the two, that Al Jolson was Mickey Mouse without the ears. At that point, I said, I have it. I'll do a comic book story about the Ku Klux Cats and a lynching of some mice. And although I had my flirtation with Batman as part of learning how to read, superheroes didn't really hold my interest very long. I really liked the satire magazines, the comic books that made fun of the culture around me. Those were the ones that really seemed to be talking about television, advertising, politics, in a way that said primarily, the grown-up world is lying to you. And this was the Rosetta Stone that would let you kind of break the code and see what was really going on in the world. <laughs>